Hello and welcome, this is Kendra, and today I'm sharing a technique video as a creative influencer for cat scrappiness. Over on Instagram, members of the creative influencer team are part of an inspiration hop starting today, and we are all sharing projects using cat scrappiness dyes in a creative way. I saw this faux glass technique using embossing glaze in a video by Artsy Allen Girl here on YouTube not too long ago, and I thought this would be a fun creative way to use with the Pop the Bubbly dies. Now I'll go ahead and warn you, this card took a very different turn from what was originally planned. My husband needed a retirement card for one of his co-workers, so I paired this die set with the Happy Day stamp set for the sentiment, and I wanted to have several glasses on the card, so I decided to make a 5x7 card instead of the A2 sized cards that I usually make. I cut a sheet of white heavyweight cardstock to measure 7 by 10 and I scored it at 5 inches along the 10 inch side to make my card base. And then I cut another 5 by 7 panel from white cardstock and I also cut a sheet of double sided adhesive to also be 5 by 7. I removed one of the backing sheets and attached the adhesive onto this panel. And the way this technique works is that you apply embossing glaze to the exposed adhesive. So now I'm placing the bottle die cut on top of the adhesive side of the panel directly in the middle along with the glass die. Now since this is the adhesive side, my low tack tape won't stick to it. So I just have to make sure it's in the right place before running it through my die cut machine. My original plan was to run this through my die cut machine in hopes that it wouldn't cut all the way through. I figured if I used heavyweight cardstock plus the adhesive backing, it wouldn't, but that's not what happened. At this point, I figured I'd continue working on this and just place the die cut shapes back into the panel. So I cut out three more glasses and to keep them from popping out of the panel, I added a few strips of low tack tape on the cardstock side. Next, I removed the backing of the glasses to expose the adhesive and then I applied some Distress Embossing Glaze in the speckled egg color. Now I've had embossing glaze in my stash for a while, but I haven't used it very much. So it's kind of clumpy. You can see it's clumping up here, but I just put the excess back into my um, jar. But I did not use an anti-static powder bag on top of this because the adhesive backing is going to be removed anyway. But in the video that I watched, she said that the embossing powder needs to be burnished into the adhesive. So I tore off a piece of the adhesive backing to do this. I used a brush to remove the excess powder. Now, even though this is on the adhesive backing that I removed, I didn't want the powder to get on the bottle part that I plan to use a different color on. So before applying the second color, I applied the heat gun to melt the embossing glaze on the glasses. And it's hard to really tell here on the video, um, but it is, you know, melting nicely and giving it a nice sheen. Next, I removed the backing for the bottle and I applied walnut stain embossing glaze. I added a little more than what was necessary, but I did want to make sure that that adhesive was completely covered. And again, I used another piece of that backing to burnish the embossing glaze onto the adhesive. And again, I brushed off the excess with a brush and then melted the powder. The original plan was to have the bottle and the glasses look like glass, of course. And I plan to foil the background with the remaining adhesive. So even though I had to switch gears and change things up, I decided to leave this as part of my video so that you can see how my project developed. Now this is a sheet of black deco foil that can be used with toner and a mink machine or a laminator. Or you can use this with adhesive and a die cutting machine. So I went ahead and I removed the purple tape and I removed all of the die cuts. And just to make sure I didn't have any excess powder that could get on my adhesive, I ran the brush across just a few places again. And then I removed the adhesive backing from the remainder of the panel. I brushed away a few of the stray flakes of powder and then I added the sheet of foil on top. 
I used a scraper to help press the foil onto the adhesive panel. And before running this through my die cutting machine to add pressure to make the foil stick, I added a piece of cardstock on top to help keep the cutting impressions from my plate from showing up on the foil panel. But as you can see from the reveal, it did not turn out so well. There's a bunch of lines and it's not very smooth. Now the negative piece of the foil looks really neat. It's like a silhouette of the shapes. So I think this will make a cool card, but I'll save this for a later project. But at this point, I decided to con continue working with the die cuts. So here you see me adding speckled egg distress oxide ink to a scrap piece of cardstock so I can use it for the bottle label. And I used the label die to figure out where I needed to place the stamp in my stamping platform. I used the retirement stamp and also brown stays on ink. And then I cut the label out with the die cut and inked up the white edges. I attached the label to the bottle with a strong liquid glue and placed the platform on top to help hold it flat while drying. And off camera, I also cut out the little die cuts for the wine glasses from that scrap cardstock. I took a piece of scrap gold foil cardstock and cut out the top of the bottle. And then after gluing all of the pieces down, I decided I wanted to add a little bit more gold to the label. So I cut out a curved strip to go across the top and I used that label die to do that. And then I also cut a strip to go across the bottom. And then of course I glued down all of these pieces. I used matching colored Copic markers to color along the edges of all of the die cuts. And then after looking at the die cuts on the big 5x7 card base, I thought it needed something else, so I decided to bring in some pattern paper. I'm using the brown crinkled pattern paper from the Cat Scrappiness Be My Valentine paper pad. And I really like the layout of sketch seven from my latest quarterly card making challenge number 11. So I'm adapting it to work with a five by seven card. I cut the paper down to be four and three quarter inches. So I made a four and three quarter inch square and I placed the middle of one side in the top left corner and then the corner of the opposing side along the edge. And this is how I'll be placing it on the card. I went ahead and cut a few gold strips that measure five inches. And then I tested out the layout to make sure that I liked the way it looked. Next, I stamped the word happy directly on the pattern paper that will be to the left of the bottle at an angle. And I added some anti-static powder on top. And then I applied some Versamark ink and I stamped this a couple of times. I haven't tried embossing on this type of pattern paper, but I decided to leave this in again so you can see how my card developed. But next I added some white embossing powder on top and then I applied my heat tool to melt it. And I'm going to zoom in here to show how this turned out. I don't know what caused it to be bumpy. Maybe it was the glossy paper or just the way I applied the Versamark. I'm not sure, but You'll see what I end up doing to salvage this here in a second. Um, so here I'm gluing down these strips, but to help tie in that blue color, I found a scrap strip of gingham check that matched the speckled egg. So I added that between the two gold strips and then I cut off the ends. Again, I align the middle of the square in the top left corner and the corner along the top edge. And then I adhered the paper to the card base and then I turned it over and cut off what was hanging off the edge with my scissors. And after gluing down two of the glasses and because I'm a perfectionist and I didn't want that bumpy happy, I went ahead and stamped happy onto a rectangle that I cut out with the cross stitched rectangle dies and I glued that on top of that word. I added some foam strips to the back of the bottle and I used my T ruler to make sure that I was placing it directly in the center of my card. And then I added three gold gems in the top right corner. And then I added some Nuvo crystal drops in morning dew on top of the liquid part of the glasses to make them shiny. And here is the finished card. As you can see, what started out as one plan quickly turned into another. I really wanted to use dies on the card where it looked like they were inlaid in the panel, 
but when crafting, sometimes we have to pivot. Of course, you may have already figured out you can achieve this look using Versamark ink and embossing glaze and then cutting out the shapes with the dies. But at least now I can say I tried embossing glaze with double-sided adhesive. But in the end, I really liked the way this card turned out and I'm glad I was able to incorporate one of the sketches from Kendra's card challenge number 11. Cat Scrappiness is one of the prize sponsors for this challenge and they have generously donated a $25 gift certificate to one lucky winner who plays along with the challenge. So if you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, click on the link in the description box below to download the free PDF printable and to get more information. I hope you'll also check out our Instagram hop. I'll have that linked in the description box also. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that thumbs up button. I hope you have a fantastic day.